Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're doing a Christmas themed cook. So before we've done a couple of different uh, turkeys on the channel, we've just done the standard kind of roast turkey. We have done rotisserie turkey. Today we're doing something, maybe if you don't need a whole turkey, you sort of want to do something a little bit smaller. So we have a turkey breast. We are going to do it on the rotisserie on the Camaro Joe. Uh, we're going to keep some of the principles the same. We're going to brine it, which is what we're going to do now. Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to do it on the rotisserie. This is our turkey breast, it's about three and a half kilos. We are going to leave the skin on it. We're not going to do anything to this here, but we are going to make up a brine. You can probably see behind me, KJ's fired up for a different cook. I'm just kind of using it now to boil up the, I was going to say the marinade, but it's not really a marinade, the brine. So I have about three litres of water in there on the boil. Uh, I'll bring you in a little bit closer and we'll talk over the rest of the ingredients because there is quite a few. So I'll put you over the pot and that way you'll see everything that's going into it. Um, the good thing is you don't have to be fussy. There's the likes of shallots and stuff going into it. They don't need peeled and sliced up. We're just going to cut them in half and throw them in. But we'll talk about that while we're doing it. Okay, so as we're three litres of water into that, we're going to go in, this is 200 grams of sugar, 200 grams of salt. start to dissolve that down. So that's a basic brine. If you do nothing else, that will get a lot of moisture into your bird, but we want to add flavor into it and aromatics. Okay, so first up, four clementines, just cut in half. Trying to jab yourself with water. Okay, then about six to eight tablespoons of maple syrup. And just have a sprig of rosemary and a couple of sage leaves. Just kind of squash them, get some of the oils out, drop them in. Four shallots, again, not pain in the skin, let's just cut them in half, get them in. Okay, five or six cloves of garlic, a cinnamon stick, and a little bit for good luck. Small handful of cloves, a couple of tablespoons of ground ginger, and three star anise. Give it all a mix around. And just shut the lid down, bring it to the boil. Okay, so I'm actually going to use a Yeti cooler to brine this in. I do have a big briner bucket, but I'm a bit worried about leaving it out overnight and it getting a little bit too warm and I definitely do not have a fridge big enough to put it into. So I've loaded this with ice. The hot brine will then go into that. As long as it's cool enough, I can top it up with a little bit of cold water if I need to. But I know this is going to keep it cool overnight um, without any issues. The last thing I want to do is go do all this effort and it be ruined in the morning because it's got too warm overnight. Although it is freezing at the minute, so it should be fine. But so grab a cooler, they're ideal for it. They're all roto molded, so they're all single, there's no seams in them whatsoever. So there's nowhere that any old turkey juice is going to get into. So they're really easy to clean them out and they will keep uh, everything as cold as possible while you're brining it. Get our brine off, uh, pour everything into this. You do not need to take any of the bits out, you don't need to strain it. Leave it all in there, uh, we're going to put it in. Everything's just going to add flavour at the end of the day and we're not going to use any of the brine liquid. Everything's going to come out, we're going to dry this off afterwards. So there's no reason to worry about bits and pieces being in there. So let's get it into the cooler. Okay. Brine's in there, ice has cooled it down nicely and there's still ice in it, so it hasn't melted at all, which is a bonus. The last thing to do, put a glove on, and before Mr. TJ decides he's gonna jump up and have it, we can get our turkey into the brine. So seal that up, that will set until tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's gonna be just under 24 hours. I think that should be fine. So if you're doing this for Christmas, I know, I know traditionally I would usually do it on Christmas Eve, um, sort of Christmas Eve night normally. I would get the turkey into the brine and it's sitting for at least 12 to 18 hours uh, in the brine and it hasn't let me down yet, so I'm gonna stick with it. This is obviously a lot smaller than a whole turkey, uh, so I'm kind of hoping that that will make the difference. So that's everything we have to do tonight. I will see you tomorrow for the actual cook. Okay, it's the following day. Um, Pretty much bang on 24 hours after we started uh, getting the turkey into the brine. So it's time to get it out of that brine, dry it off a little bit so the skin isn't quite as soggy and wet. Uh, we're gonna hit it with a bit of a seasoning and then get it onto that rotisserie. So this is the seasoning we've made up ourselves. Full recipe will be in the description box below, obviously. Uh, but it's a mix of salt, pepper, uh, paprika, a little bit of turmeric in there, most, mostly for color. Um, 
Uh, there is garlic, onion, uh, sage, rosemary, nice savory flavors in there too. There's no sugar in it whatsoever, so this is gonna be a purely savory uh, rub. So you can make it up, put it on by hand, or if you have a shaker, put it into it and get it ready. But let's get the turkey out of the brine uh, and get it dried off, ready to go onto the rotisserie. Grab a tray with a rack on it. It's a beast. Oh, the smell coming out of that. Smells <laughs> like Christmas. I think it's the clementines, you know. Spices are good, but the clementines to me just say Christmas. That's the worst bit about this. I hate clearing out brown buckets, but because it's my AA, I do, I'll definitely do it. I won't leave it sitting for too long. Pick off any little bits that are still stuck to it. So, so I'm just gonna let that sit and air dry for five, 10 minutes. Uh, we will dab the, most of the moisture off it with a little bit of kitchen roll. Then we're actually gonna tie it up and put it onto the rotisserie and then I'm gonna season it afterwards, just so I don't have to touch it after I put the seasoning onto it. So we will tie it up uh, just to try and pull it into more of a cylinder shape and then get the rotisserie pushed through it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the turkey onto the board, skin side down, and we're gonna try and truss it to pull it together into a cylinder. We are now we're at one end and the other, so we are probably going to end up with this little bit being overdone, but our main focus is this section here. I'll come underneath the string. And then slide each loop underneath a little further up. Go again. One more. Take a bit of excess, flip it over. I'm just gonna tie this off here. So there we go. That will hopefully keep it in shape as we cook it. Now time to get it onto the rotisserie. Here's the spit we're going onto. We'll put the first fork onto it towards the bottom. We will try and come in through this narrow side, through the center of the turkey breast. Pretty close to centered. Just push the fork into it, on with our second fork. Tighten that down. But we can adjust these whenever they're on the grill. For now, it looks good. Any little flaps of skin like this here are gonna burn, so just get rid of them. Okay, let's get it seasoned up. Drizzle a little bit of oil, just act as a binder, and get that seasoning on. Get the sides done too. Perfect. Okay, the grill is fired up with the fire to the back. Um, I've used the divider in there just to hold it to the back. Motor set up, geotisseries put on. Flames will die down a bit once we get the spit on. Go ahead, stick the spit in. We're not too bad, we're pretty centered on the grill. So we'll go ahead, start the motor off. Close the lid down, let that do its thing. Right, it's well and truly dark. Uh, believe it or not, it's only been on for about an hour and a half. Um, it's almost ready. We're currently sitting about 68, 69 degrees C. So we're gonna take it to 72, 73 in the thickest part. The thinner end of it is probably ready now. It's sitting about 72. Uh, so it is gonna probably go over. But the good thing about a rotisserie is it's constantly being basted in fat. Um, so all the juices and stuff that are running out of it, they don't just run off into a drip tray. They actually get caught and wrapped around the meat. So uh, not too worried about it drying out. But we will uh, bring it up to about 72 C and then we will lift it off and let it rest. That'll carry on cooking up to about 75. At that point then I'll bring you back in and I'll let you know what we're gonna do with it after it has rested. Before we wrap this up to rest it in, we're going to take a clementine and grate a little bit of zest over the top of it. Just to allow it to melt down in while it's still nice and hot.
So turkey breast is off. Slice it up a little bit, just to get a few video clips, etc. Overall, it's looking good. It smells amazing. Moistness is perfect. And it's like there's still plenty of juice in it. There's a nice little bit of a smoke ring on it. The skin has kind of kept a lot of that moisture in as well while it's been spinning on the rotisserie. I specifically haven't tasted it a bit yet. Oh. Oh man. That's a tasty turkey. You can really get the citrus coming through on it. Oh, my mouth is watering so much. It's so hard to talk. If I dribble in this video, I'm sorry. Yeah, the citrus comes through so well on it. And that is obviously the brine. We had them clementines in there, boiled down into that brine and grating that little bit of zest over the top of it at the end just to rest it. Really, the smell coming off it is amazing. It's going to make everybody hungry. If you sit down at the table and this is in the middle of it, that smell is so good. But the flavour is running through the meat as well, which is awesome. When you go to all that effort, doing it 24 hours beforehand, you like to really taste it coming through the meat. Some marinades don't, but this brining this way definitely does. So this kind of thing would be ideal if you're only catering for a couple of people on Christmas Day. If you don't want to cook a whole turkey or you want to do this with a selection of other meats. People always shy away from the breast because it can dry out, but doing it this way keeps it perfectly moist. So if you do want to give it a try, I'll leave the recipe in the description box below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.